Okay, well tonight we have a classic here during Thanksgiving week. Probably have some great movies here along Thanksgiving week and then um, also around Christmas going into s some themes and so I, I think this is a classic in terms of really showing the power of the mind along the lines of Solaris which which basically the planet Solaris magnifies the awareness of giving and receiving of the, the universal law that everything is thoughts and you're always just experiencing your thoughts and so in Solaris you see these um, visitors that show up that are basically acting out unresolved grievances. So Solaris was basically a big pointer for all of us that everything we've experienced in this life from parents and teachers, siblings, partners, um, authority figures and so on and so forth. They're just a motion picture of our thoughts and, and what it really is is there are grievances. People are grievances. They're acting out our grievances and that's why Jesus has turned relationships into a pathway to God where you know traditional mysticism was get away from people, go off to the woods, you know, get your Buddha baggy bowl and sit in silence and get your lotus position and and still to this day uh, most of the spiritualities activate, uh, actively advocate meditation and there are many pathways that, that were, are cloistered uh, convents and monasteries, and there are many um, that basically advocate silence. And as I was saying the other day, Jesus, Jesus calls fighting against sin, contemplation, and long periods of meditation, is, he calls them tedious and time-consuming. Only Jesus can get away with, with poking fun at traditional spirituality, because he's the one who's transcended the whole world. So. He knows a pathway called Holy Relationship, and what makes Holy Relationship such a fast pathway is that that uh, he's basically teaching us that every person that we meet, including the person that we believe we are, is a grievance against God. And all of perception, all of fragmented perception, is a projection of rage. It seems kind of steep. But I do remember people saying, I was doing the workbook lessons and I got to the lesson, what I see is a form of vengeance. And like, what's that mean? What I see was mean that tulip is a form of vengeance? <laughs> yes. That little kitty cat, <laughs> that cute, cute little kitty cat, all those pretty little pictures on Facebook of all those cute little animals that seem to be separate objects and, <clears throat> and separated off by distance and time and space. Yeah, a form of vengeance. The kitty cat's a form of vengeance. And therefore, we're being asked to see the world in a whole different way. To see not only that nobody's ever been mistreated or misharmed, or uh, there's been no victims, there's been no victimizers, that the entire projected cosmos is a projected form of vengeance. And, and the fears are not outside, they're not in the hurricanes and the tsunamis and the earthquakes and the fault lines cracking open and, and storms and all kinds of things, diseases and plagues and everything. No, 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 that's not the problem. None of that has been a problem at all. It's rage. It's inner unconscious rage. The rage of the ego wanting to have its fantasy world blessed by God, and thinking that God's going to finally, you know, after enough time, like a temper tantrum, that God will finally give in and pronounce reality to, per, to perception. But the Holy Spirit is the maker of a new world, of a simultaneous healed world, and this movie tonight, again it's a great team movie because there seems to be an issue, they're going to assemble a team just like we've been assembling our teams, they're going to assemble the team. And we, our teams are basically above the water and this team gets to go underwater. And so their dramas are playing out underwater and for most human beings, most of their dramas play out on top. Of course we know the abyss 
is an exception. <laughs> That'll wake you up too if you that, that could be coming during this holiday season. I heard it mentioned last night. The abyss, the abyss, let's go for the abyss. So this is a classic because these characters, mainly three main characters, are, are specialists in their field. They're brought together in a team and much like we're formulating teams right now for the ministry and people will be called upon to do tasks, not just to do them, but to excel in them so that the synergy of the whole ministry works as a whole. Jesus just was arranging the team. He's just picking his team and then he's got to you know, throw the ball in. He's got to set things in motion for us so that we can, you know, extend the love of God, extend the love of Christ in a very vibrant way so that people can really feel it and can really relate to it and are drawn to it, that are drawn to our light. So this is a preliminary movie and I would say it's basically the theme of this movie is is getting in touch with what has been pushed out of awareness getting in touch with the power of the mind, um, the decision to forget, which is talked about in The Course in Miracles, but very rarely will you ever see a movie that addresses the decision to forget. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a main theme in The Course in Miracles, but you just don't find movies. You know, in a bit you could say Groundhog Day, or it doesn't quite, you know, get into that aspect of forgetting. Um, there are s some movies that, that deal with memory, and and time and perception and this Jason this is Bourne. a good one. Hmm? Jason Bourne a little bit. Yeah, Jason Bourne, especially that one mm -hmm. where he's he starts to uh, reconfigure and Albert Finley's the, mm -hmm. the character that he's pushed out of awareness mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. But even with that movie, there's these memories. That Jason Bourne has has forgotten, pushed out of awareness, mm -hmm. but. This movie goes more to, not only was the darkness pushed out of awareness and it's coming up to be healed, but the light, love, truth were pushed out of awareness. So recently, you know, there was the movie Arrival, and it's always interesting with these alien movies, like what form are the aliens going to take? These are, what were they called? Sep Heptopods. Hep Heptopods. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, if you've seen uh, movies mm -hmm. over the years, uh, uh, of course, E.T. was an alien, but uh, it's Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and we've had quite a lot of movies where there's beings. This is like, this is, this is like a, a, a probe, it's, it's an object that's come from outer space and has come to Earth. Whereas in Solaris, the astronauts, Chris Kelvin goes to Solaris, has to go a long way to come to the brilliantly lit up planet. This is a probe it's coming in, but it's the same dynamic. It's representing divinity. It's representing love. It's light, and truth, and a power of among all other things. So it's like coming closer. So those that are coming in contact with this this object, this probe from outer space, maybe they even have a name in here for it. It's what it is. Is it's coming close to power? And whoa, what a power! And also, it's not like a power as the world knows power, it's the power of the mind, it's the power of the of projection, of projecting the unconscious and trying to get rid of that power, trying to get rid of that hurt, that unconscious, and see it as acted out outside of you as disasters and dramas. I think it's a great movie for spiritual community. I mean, this would be a, a great teaching movie for people who are thinking of living in spiritual community. <laughs> Three people from totally diverse backgrounds are thrown together with some others underwater where there's no escape. That's what people feel like Living Miracles has been in, in Awakening Mind over the years. They're, they're trapped. They're trapped inside these walls and there's no way out. And, and there's a monster coming up and the monster didn't seem to be there before, but it is there now. And they don't know what they did to deserve this. They, their life was maybe not perfect, but so much more easy before mm. they decided to go dipping down into the unconscious and, and praying, bring it on to the Holy Spirit. They go, that sounds like a really good prayer. Then, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, this is, this is a bring it on movie. These are characters that are experts in their field, 
brought together, assembled in a team. They've already got some friction on the personality level, but they are going, that's going to be much a smaller test than what's underneath, which is their fear of love, their fear of light, their fear of power, and their fear of clarity, their fear of certainty, and when it came along this movie, it just had a big smile on at the end. It was like, you know, some movies you go through and, ooh, this one's got good potential, and then does it hit the home run at the end? Does it really deliver on a major theme? Yes, it does. And so this is a good lead-off movie. This is a, a lead-off hitter in the lineup for us, for, we'll call it our fall-winter movie series. And uh, from some of you who haven't seen it, then you're in for a treat, because the classics all pack a lot of punch. And this is definitely a classic. Okay, off we go. Okay, well, there you have it, it's all there, everything. Some of you might remember the Jim Carrey movie, Bruce Almighty, where God goes on vacation and leaves Bruce in charge. And what happens? Bruce isn't ready. He tries to, he realizes he can, he can't part the Red Sea, but he can part a bowl of tomato soup. He goes, ah! <laughs> he can do all those things. That's part of the movie, but he's not ready. And yeah, what a profound movie. And you think about all of time and space and anything that ever has seemed to happen to you or against you, for you or against you in terms of form, that it's all just thoughts. The secret of salvation is but this, you are doing this to yourself. And you can't escape from the, this crazy, tiny man idea, unless you first accept. I have done this thing, and it is this I would undo. It's like that's the responsibility of bringing everything back to the mind. It's the stuff that I talk all the time about. You are not responsible for the error but you are responsible for accepting the correction to the error. And he also says, do not project the error to time. So every time there seems to be an upset that you believe is caused by someone, something, doesn't matter, in time and space, that's the decision to forget. Forget the mind. Forget the power of the mind. And that's why it seems more tempting to try to work out something in a personal way, because of the fear of the power. And what is the fear of the power except the fear of miscreation? The fear of misuse of God's God-given power. That's what is so horrifying. It's not diseases and tsunamis. It's not bodies dying. It's not things being unfinished, unfinished business in time and space. That's all just a projection of the fear, of the power of thought. The 
fear of the belief that I could misuse the power that God created me with. So that's what's being completely covered over. And that last scene is just spectacular. Mm. Why are you holding my hand? You're holding my hand. And then the look on their faces and then the final scene of three humans clueless about everything. Just, you see the looks on their faces, they're kind of dazed, dull, they've forgotten the mind. They've become mindless. Remember that song, You're Only Human, Born to Make? mistakes, that's the look, that's the human look, that last scene, the three of them kind of sitting there with this dazed look on their face, that, that's the human condition. And that's only the result of one thing, the decision to forget. So if the whole cosmos is just amnesia of God, then what could be the solution except amnesia of the ego? How else could God be remembered if most the ego could be forgotten? If memory is a, just an ability and you have to turn that memory away from the ego, which is what? Remembering the past? Repeating the past like Groundhog Day over and over? using a mechanism to stay asleep and to stay forgetting, to stay unaware of the Kingdom of Heaven and turn it around to forget the ego. Simply do this, be still, lay aside all thoughts of what you are, what you learned, all thoughts of Right, wrong, good, bad, hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past has taught, or one belief you ever learned before from anything. Forget this world, forget this course, and come with holy empty hands unto your God. That's reverse amnesia. And that's what the I Need Do Nothing section is about the, the Course, where you simply make a space in your mind, a quiet, still spot, a holy instant, in which the body ceases to demand any attention because you will not give it any attention anymore. You will not give attention to the body, the doer, to past memories to future projections. You start to remember all these passages from the Course. At no single instant does the body exist at all. It is always remembered or anticipated. Past, future. The same trick. And when the computer, when the sphere first spoke to them through the computer, it said, We are all on a journey. And what did they ask the sphere? Where from? Where, where did you come from? And what did the sphere answer? Happy. I am happy. They ask, what is the source? Where is, where did you come from? Oh, sphere. And it said, happy, I am happy. The answer was given. That is the Holy Spirit.
and then the suspicion started. Remember Dustin Hoffman? Well, if he's been down here for 300 years, he must be lonely, and he could get mad. <laughs> That is the most egoic idea, that happy could get lonely and then get mad. You see the loneliness, the fear, the anger, it, loneliness, can, that's, psych, that's what the psychologists are taught. That's, that's the whole belief in separation right there, that's how it responded to happy, I am happy. And every day your brothers and sisters are transmitting one message from their heart, I am happy. And if you choose to see something else <laughs> other than I am happy, the snakes, <laughs> the snakes more poisonous than on the sur anything on the surface, as Sharon Stone said, snakes with big teeth. Those snakes, those are snakes of ego thoughts. Yeah. Anytime, I'll finish that sentence, anytime when your brothers and sisters are transmitting their beautiful message of I am happy, and you see something else, that is the decision to forget. That's all it is. You could remind yourself, see anything out of place at all, and it's the decision to forget the power, the happiness, the love, the oneness. It's very, very, very profound. So for those of you that saw Arrival and got all fired up about the movie of that one woman's intuition and guidance could save the world, welcome to Sphere, bring it home. <laughs> beyond anything, beyond Chinese generals or countries or militaries. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about um, like the dream where it, it seems to be dreaming you and they didn't know which one which one's mind had the power and I was reminded of that line from the course about you seem to be a character in your brother's dream mm -hmm. and that's what they at one point were experiencing. Yeah, that's the, that's the reversal. You know, I, I remember years ago, I, when I was at the Peace House, I, I did these sessions, really, really deep sessions, called Reversing Cause and Effect. Mm -hmm. And then occasionally there would be different ones, and they would say, oh, let me transcribe them and put them into a little booklet. Well, Jeffrey decided, first of all, that he would, he would listen to them, listen to the session, Reversing Cause and Effect, which we still have online, and I believe maybe even the audio of that, I think. It's an awakening, awakening Through Course in Miracles. Yeah, it's an Awakening oh. Through Course in Miracles. We may still even have the audio file. CourseInMiracles.org. Mm -hmm. And he listened to it, and he said, what was that? So he listened to it a second time, he said, what was that? So he listened to it. I believe seven times before he felt he was ready to transcribe it. Kind of like Jason Warwick reading Purpose is the Only Choice over and over and over on the top of the Swiss mountains. One line at a time and then long pauses in between. And then he actually transcribed it, but he, he, he wouldn't transcribe it until he had a sense of it. But the the belief in separation is the belief that, that the effect 
of God, which is Christ, can leave the mind of God so that the effect can leave the mind of God and, and take on a reality of its own, apart from God. You know, just leave the mind of God. And then it believes that it can create itself. But there first requires this sense of, of the belief that it can actually pull away that an idea in the mind of God can actually leave the mind of God. That means that the effect can leave the cause. So cause and effect are split off. And then the ego takes that and it turns it around and it projects out a world of time and space in which the dream is the cause and the dreamer is the effect. Who are you? There's a name, Jerry, or Harry, or pick, put in your name, Kirsten, Suzanne, Diana, JP, any name you want, you can put in there. But that name is what? Not Christ. The effect of God. It's now a figure in a dream that seems to be what? made by the dream. Kirsten had a cause. It was called Roger and Jackie. Cause, dream. Dream figures. Roger and Jackie. Intercourse. Conception. Fertilization. Birth. Growing up, where are you from? New Zealand. Cause? New Zealand. Effect? Kristen. That's the, everybody's story, is that they, they forgot that they are the dreamer of the dream, and they think that the dream made the dreamer. That's the lie that the dream made the dreamer. And what is the Course in Miracles about? What does Jesus say? You are the dreamer of the world of dreams. No other cause does it have or ever will. That's what the happy dream is about. That's what forgiveness is about. That's what the tr true perception is about. That's what the real world is about. Those are all just synonyms for each other. That you are the dreamer of the world of dreams. And if you are the dreamer of the world of dreams, then you cannot be at the mercy of the dream. But if you forget that you are the dreamer of the dream, then you are but a dancing shadow in someone else's dream. At the mercy of parents, at the mercy of society, at the mercy of the military, at the mercy of the president of your country, at the mercy of the laws of the world, hunger, thirst, fatigue, all the human frailties. What's underneath the frailties of being human, the belief that you are the dream figure and not the dreamer. That you are a part of the dream and not the dreamer of the dream. You might remember that movie, Good Will Hunting, with Robin Williams and Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, very famous movie. Matt Damon plays kind of a genius character who has these genius abilities, but has love and worthiness. And so, because he has unworthiness, he looks 
for his security and safety in different things. His friend, he always wakes up in the morning and goes and visits his friend Ben Affleck. He's got unworthiness underneath that genius. And then there's that great scene with Robin Williams, you know, where Robin Williams has to repeat, repeatedly tell him, it's not your fault. Over and over and over again. And isn't that what Jesus is saying to the sleeping mind? It's not your fault. You've been mistaken. And then finally in that movie, near the end of the movie, he, he doesn't visit Ben Affleck. And they just show Ben Affleck's face and he's got the biggest smile on it. Because why? Because the dependency, the codependency is broken. Even the codependency of friendship is no longer needed in atonement. Go beyond friends, beyond the person, beyond the body. So that's what all this seeming backdrop is about. That's what the sphere, the whole sphere movie was about. They were just given an opportunity to see the power of the mind and and at the end, Dustin Hoffman's character, Norman, says, we have this gift. He calls it a gift. And even calling it a gift, he says, we're not ready. They all three say we were not ready to receive the gift. Some of you might remember there was a line in the Course that uh, Roger Walsh made a beautiful book of sayings from the Course, and the title of the book was, Accept This Gift. Accept the power of the mind. Accept that you are a dreamer of the world of dreams, and not at the mercy of the world, or the the beliefs of the world, or the, the so-called laws of the world. That's what Lesson 50 is all about. I am sustained by the love of God. That's the inroads to accepting yourself as the dreamer of the dream. That's what Lesson 76 is all about. I am under no laws but God's. Why? Because I was created by love. And love is not subjugated to the laws of gravity, the laws of economics, the laws of nutrition, the laws of friendship, all the laws that Jesus rattles off in Lesson 50 and Lesson 76. They're all there, laid out specifically. I am not at the mercy of any laws I am under no laws but God's. That's the escape hatch. And in the end, the truth is not subjective, and truth is not objective, and truth is not relative. And the truth is not different for everyone. There's only one truth. I am spirit. That's it. Nothing but that. Nothing added to that and nothing subtracted from that. Just that. And Jesus says, you can accept this at any point, even at the point of death. You may resist the fact and seem to play out a life on earth. And even if you are laying on what the world calls your deathbed, and you are winding down to your last few breaths, 
Unlike in this movie where time seems to be running out with the clock ticking, or in a basketball or football game with the shot clock running down, there is no time limit to this. You could be on the deathbed, as the world would describe it, and go, I have no need for this at all, Jesus says, and rise up, resurrect in the mind, in one instant, with one happy realization. I have no need for any of this at all. And it's that simple. So when we're talking about following our purpose and following our function and being used by the Christ mind in the plan of atonement, all it is is coming into function, glee, joy, happiness. My function and my happiness are one. Mm -hmm so that you lose the memory of time. Just like when you were a child and were playing, you lost track of the passage of time. When you really were playing, and you were so absorbed in the play, you lost track of the passage of time, and that's the whole point. Be perfectly quiet, perfectly still, perfectly tranquil, always. That is what time is for, to learn just that and nothing more. Stillness. Time's end. That's it. Spreaker that. <laughs> ego, ego can smoke that one in your pipe. <laughs>